What's going on guys? So in this video, I wanna do a little bit of a more different format, kind of a more laid back, put your AirPods or your speakers on, um, you know, kind of go for a walk, um, you know, decompress, sit down, relax, and enjoy this video. I'm not gonna make it too, too long, but I kind of want it to just be more so of an audio effect for you guys to kind of listen to, let it sink in. I'm gonna tell a little bit of a story here and I want you to really close your eyes and really think and dive into exactly what it is I'm saying. And I want you to put this uh, into reflection when it comes to your trading career and your trading journey, right? Because that's what this is at the end of the day. This is a journey um, that we are all on and continue to be on for as long as we do this business. Um, you know, so the title of this video is The Untold Secrets of a Profitable Day Trader, okay? Um, you know, and when, when I was thinking about this title, I wasn't thinking of it in a context of referring to myself, but the day trader who is successful, the day trader who is profitable on a month-over-month -month basis, quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis, year-over-year -year basis, um, you know, obviously every trader experiences losses, even some of the best traders in the world who are, you know, moving around multi-million dollars worth of liquidity have losing days and losing streaks and still fall into slumps and, and funks and, and everything else in between. But what I really want to drive home in this video, uh, if you could really pay attention and kind of pick out the nuggets and in, th in certain things that I'm going to say in this video that are going to maybe hit home with you and maybe make you reflect. Um, so I'm just going to dive right into it, okay? The average person who comes into this market, the average day trader, the average investor, the average swing trader is so focused on the wins versus doing things right, Okay. So an example that I kind of want to give you guys is how many times have you entered into a trade and the trade goes in your favor and you take a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, whatever the case may be, and you sell for a profit and you're happy and you're excited and, and you know, you're telling everyone about it. Um, how hard was that? You know, uh, let's just take a stock, for example, that we trade a lot in my discord, let's say Tesla. We get into a Tesla uh, calls, for example, we're trading options. We get into Tesla calls. We understand we had levels marked out. We did our homework. We, we understand the technical analysis behind that. We get into the trade five, ten minutes later, the trade goes in our favor, four, five, six, seven dollars. We sell out of that. We lock in those profits and, you know, we kind of celebrate. Uh, and a lot of traders really focus on those wins. A lot of traders really just focus on how to win or when to sell or um, you know, focus on the next setup that could potentially be a winner, when in fact it's focusing on the losses that is going to get you to having those consistent days. Now, what I mean by that is, regardless of your account size, right? Let's, I'm just gonna use a very general example. Let's say you're a six-figure trader, meaning you have over $100,000 in your brokerage account that you're using to trade. Even if you're a multi six figure trader and you're putting in six figures per trade, it is not your $100,000 that move the stock two or three or $4. The stock was going to do that with or without you, okay? Um, take, a, take, an, take something into, you know, something into effect. The next time you look at a winning trade, something that you would trade, sit on your hands. Watch that movement. Watch that price action. If that trade goes in the direction that you were thinking about putting your money, it went without you. So a lot of times, you know, you have to really sit back and, and understand that the market is going to do whatever it's going to do with or without you. And the major focal point here is that a lot of times we are so focused as traders and especially newer traders are so focused on the wins that when we lose, we allow that to eat us up emotionally. We allow that to kind of, you know, weigh on us and we allow that to kind of determine if we're a good trader or not. 
when in reality you need to be focusing on how you're losing and how you're continuing to stay in this game okay and everyone's journey is a little bit different okay there's some people who you know right off the bat win a ton of trades win a bunch of money they go through a slump they kind of learn the process, learn their strategy, understand their psychology, understand themselves as a person, and get better over time. Do they have some losing days? Yeah. But it, does it seem like they're a little bit more luckier than the rest? Yes. Then you have a group of traders who constantly lose, and they and they, they feel like you know they have one good day, and then they have five bad days, and then they have one good day, and then they give everything back, and then they have a losing month followed by a break-even month, and then they lose again. And it feels like you can never get yourself out of the hamster wheel. And it's over and over and over the same kind of, you know, song and dance. And uh, the point that I'm trying to make um, with that is it comes down to you as a person um, outside of trading, okay? It comes down to your personality. It comes down to, and I'm going to be very, very honest, it comes down to how well you manage your personal life is going to affect how well you do in the stock market, especially if you're trading. And I'm not talking about people who, you know, um, put in $1,000 into your three favorite stocks and, and you've been doing it for 10 years and you're going to do it for another 40 years. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone who wants to be a day trader. Um, you know, so you have to kind of reflect on, on your personal life, okay? And this is where psychology comes into to trading i'm very very big on the way people think and i'm very very big on the way that you know people tick um and it's one of the reasons why you know i started my evolution traders discord it's one of the reasons why i started um creating my two video courses is because i really want to understand the way that people think and you know for some people i think it's a little bit harder and takes a little bit longer for that to kind of sink in but i also think that there's a lot more emotional damage when it comes to some people versus others and um you know what that exactly means is is that if you have if you're a type of person okay that when you have an opinion on something and we're not talking about the stock market i'm just going to talk about life in general if you're someone who is very opinion opinionated and when you're having a conversation with, let's say, a few fellow friends, <clears throat> and you're voicing your opinion, and someone has a different sort of opinion, do you talk over this person? Do you want to be the focal point of attention? Do you want to get your point across? Do you have a hard time understanding other people's views and concepts? Um, because at the end of the day, opinions are exactly what that means it's just, it's just their opinions okay everyone is entitled to their own opinion everyone's entitled to their own thought process but as a person if you are more attached to the way you feel and in your beliefs versus someone else's is going to reflect in your trading okay um you know have you had a lot of success in your life um you know, luck, some would call it, um, gifted, talented, athletic, um, smart, um, things come easy, good looking, um, you know, all of these things are going to play a, a, a key when it comes to your trading. And I'll just use this kind of as a, a quick little example. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, you're a very good looking man or a very beautiful and attractive woman things in life tend to come a little easier than the next person, you know? And again, this is my opinion. Um, but when you really think about that, if you're very used to going through life and having things handed to you almost, and you're, you're going through life where things come a little bit easier to you than the next person. Uh, second example, maybe, you know, you have a little bit better genetics uh, physically than someone else. And maybe you can, you know, diet and exercise and, you know, lift weights and hit the gym three or four times a week. And, you know, you have a body that looks like it's, you know, sculpted out of out of marble. And you have someone else who necessarily doesn't have those genetics and doesn't come out that much. You know, in the end, who really has to work harder? Is it the person with the, you know, naturally gifted genetics or is it the person that, 
you know, needs to work and try a little bit harder. And the point that I want to make with those two examples is the person with the better overall physical genetics and maybe that they didn't have to work as hard as the next person and the maybe the person who was a little bit more physically naturally attractive by nature than the next person has things that come to them a little bit more easier in life so when you get to something like trading which is two bipolar opposites of the spectrum of the topics that i'm talking about but when you come into that market and you're always so used to those things going in your favor, you're always so used to things coming easy, you tend to go in a bigger drawdown and tend to have a harder time cutting losses and tend to have a harder time letting go of your biased opinions and you tend to have a harder time scaling and growing an account versus there might be someone else naturally who had to work a little bit harder and understood that things don't come as fast that when they come into the markets of course take losses but automatically due to the way that their brains are hardwired or the life experiences that they went through allow them to see the overall context and the overall picture a little bit more clear than someone who's had things given to them a lot easier by nature and what that means is as the person a i'm gonna say is let's call them the more you know physically attractive and genetically enhanced person versus the, maybe someone who is not as genetically blessed so to say so person a Fantastic genetics and things come very easy to them. Person B has to work a little bit harder, but ultimately gets to the same spot in the end game, right? In the, at the end of the book. Person A comes into the market, takes their losses, has some wins, but when they lose, they don't know how to emotionally handle that and do things like overtrade and do things like continue to look for new strategies and do things like blame the market or something else out of their control as to why they're making the mistakes in that process of learning to get over that takes a little bit longer than say someone who's coming from a psychological background where they understand that changes need to be made they understand that maybe they're going to have to let go of their opinions they understand that maybe they're going to have to work a little bit harder than the next person. And that psychologically, they're able to adapt a little bit quicker than someone else, if that makes sense. So in the grand scheme of things, you have Trader A and Trader B. Now, both Trader A and Trader B can eventually reach the same goal of being successful and being consistent and being profitable. But it might take trader A an extra year longer or two years longer or three years longer than it takes someone with the traits in trader B just due to the way that their brain mechanisms are hardwired and their thought processes are hardwired and their emotions are strung together. Okay, So regardless if you fall into trader A or fall into trader B, you can both eventually reach the same end goal. But if you want to cut that time in half significantly, you need to understand how you have to manage yourself and your emotions and your thought processes. Because if you don't and you continue to come into the markets and you blame everything else or think that you're just a bad trader or have two winning days and give it all back and have a week's worth of losses and start all over again, you're never going to consistently grow and come out of that hole, okay? So everyone's different and everyone's going to take a different path. Now, for me, I kind of fell more into the wave of when I first started, I made money. Everything seemed easy. 
and this is when I had a very, very small account before I found my mentor, before I found all my strategies that you guys in the Discord have. I would put money in, and this is when I used to day trade stocks and not options. I would put money in, and I was trading predominantly small cap stocks, penny stocks, dollar stocks, $4 stocks, $7 stocks. Names of tickers of names of companies I didn't even know what they did. Company could have been real, fake, or whatever. Um, not like, you know, trading the AMCs of the world or the GameStops of the world or, you know, any of the meme plays. You know, I wasn't trading Bed Bath & Beyonds. This is way before all this stuff. This is going back 2016. 2015 2016 uh you know small cap trader you know penny stock trader and i'd buy stocks and i'd watch them go up 10 cents 15 cents i'd sell i'd make money i'd make money i'd make money i'd make money you know but i really wasn't growing as a trader i really didn't know how to lose so when i started to switch over to trading large cap stocks and mid cap stocks and everything else in between i never really handled how to lose you know, because if you want to be consistent, you need to understand how to lose, okay? Um, because every trader is going to lose trades. Now, the way that you lose is going to outline the success that you're going to have over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, however long you choose to do this. So for me, when I went into that other market where... I thought that everything was going to be natural, that I thought that, you know, it's a flip of a coin, stocks can go up or stocks can go down. If I buy a stock here, then, you know, maybe I go into drawdown, and but it comes back eventually. And there came to a point in time where some of those stocks and some of those plays and, and trades and biases didn't come back in my direction, and I would lose a lot. And I couldn't understand why I was losing. And, you know, I went into a, a long period of time, it was about a year's worth of time where you know, I was losing month after month after month after month after month until one day I started to not just lose, but started to break even, okay? And I started to develop rules for myself, and I started to let go of my bias, and I started to, you know, let go of always wanting to win, and I started letting go of feeling like I had to win, and, and chasing the next dollar, and wondering when I was going to break even again. You know, if I had lost $2,000 in a week, uh, you know, how I normally, how I originally thought of that was I lost $2,000 this week. If I make $2,500 next week, I break even plus 500. And that's the way I looked at trading for a very, very long time. If I lost 1000 well, if I make 1100 at least I made my money back. You know, if I lost $500 and I, and I told myself, if I make 1000 not only am I going to make my money back, but I'm going to make 5000 And I... It took the market to take all of it away from me before I realized that that's not the way to look at the market. That's not the way to look at this as a whole. The way to look at this as a whole is, yes, you're going to take losing trades, but if you can disconnect yourself from the emotions of trying to win back what you lost and just focusing on the process and the strategy and accumulating days that you do everything right, in the end, you're going to come out profitable. So as I started to learn these things and sl slowly started to shift away from trying to win back money that was lost and accepted the fact that the money that I lost was gone and focused on the next trade and taking the next possible best setup according to my trading plan and rules that I started to develop, I could take, I eventually started to see myself not go from losing, you know, three, four thousand um, dollars one month or a thousand dollars another month to just all of a sudden making, you know, a thousand dollars every day, you know. But I, I started to see a transition where not only did I stop losing on a month over month basis, but I was breaking even, you know, where I've, I would have the same amount of winning days as I would have losing days. Or I'd make two or three thousand dollars, and then you know I'd lose fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. So it's like I really wasn't making anything, but I also really wasn't losing anything. And it came to a point in time, and it almost took about two years after that, to where I kind of filled in the holes in between, in the knowledge and the psychological part of of you know the journey of where I came from and understanding the process and understanding when to let go and understanding when to kind of move on and understanding how to lose. Because like I said, 
if you enter into a trade and the trade's a winning trade, you didn't have to do anything. But if you get into a trade and it's a losing trade, trade now you have to do something, okay? And that's the point that I want to make. Winning is easy when you trade stocks. It's losing is the hard part. It's understanding when to cut your losses is the hard part. So as I started to realize this, and I went through and I took multiple trades a day and, I, and day by day and week by week and week by week. And the longer that time passed and I understood that if I disassociated myself with how much I was winning or how much I was losing, but in fact focus on the process and just doing everything right that I could control because we can't control the markets. So everything that I was doing, I wanted to be in control of. How much I lost at the end of it was okay because I was in control of when it hit my stop loss. How much I won didn't matter because I had no control over the wins, but I have control over the losses. And as soon as I started to understand that losing was a part of this game and a successful trader or a million dollar trader or a six figure dollar a six figure trader doesn't mean that they don't lose it doesn't mean that they have a bad month it doesn't mean that they have a bad week what it means is they've done the same thing for so long that their wins eventually catch up to the losses and because they're doing the right thing each and every single day and showing up to work each and every single day, eventually the account grows to a point where the bad day or the losing day, because you're following your rules, doesn't hurt you anymore. And you become numb and immune to the losses. But how long that process takes is all dependent on the, each individual. How long you've been doing this. How well you can accept the fact that you're going to lose. How well are you disciplined? How focused are you? How often do you break your rules because of your ego? If you get into a trade and it wins, you did nothing. You are not a rock star. You are not a superhero. You are nothing. The trader who can have a technical entry, get into a trade, cut that trade because it failed and, and cut that trade because it went against their beliefs and it went against their plan and it went against their rules is a real trader. That's the consistency that it's going to take in order for you to break through to that next level. But so many people get trapped underneath the sand to where they have big winning days they give it all back they have big winning days they find a new strategy they have big winning days they give it all back they have big winning days they blow it all they have a bad month they're gone you never see or hear from these people again so many traders come into this market so many traders leave this market the ones who make a lot of money in this market are the ones who stick around this market, are the ones who understand that you're going to lose, are the ones who understand that there's always another trade, are the ones who understand their emotions. It doesn't matter what you think the stock is going to do. It matters what you're doing after you're in the stock. Because like I said, stocks is like flipping a coin. Now you can have a technical outlook. You can have a technical stop loss. You can have a technical entry. But whether that stock does what you think it's going to do is 50-50, right? Even the best setup in the world doesn't work 100% of the times. So it's what are you going to do when it doesn't work? What are you going to do when the trade fails? Are you going to cons constantly sit here and tell yourself that it's the market or you know it's the Fed or it's this or that or whatever? You can't do that. You can't do that. What, what you have to focus on is the protection of the capital over the how much you're going to make part. And everyone comes into day trading stocks looking at how much they can make or how much they made on this one good trade. 
or I remember when I made $2,000 on this trade, if, if I do this again and I hold it for a little bit longer, I'll make $2,000 again. That's not what it's about. What it's about is controlling your losses. What it's about is controlling your emotions. What it's about is doing everything the right way. And that's why I get back to saying, what do you do right in your own personal life the right way each and every single day? Okay, when I first started this YouTube a uh, long time ago, uh, in one of the first videos, I had kind of thrown something out there. I said, when you get up in the morning, before you even get on the charts, do you make your bed? Okay. Do you make your bed? And as stupid as that sounds, if you don't, you don't have any discipline. Now, does that mean that you're a bad person because you roll out of bed, you go to the charts? You know, there's people who roll out of bed, they go to the charts, they make a million dollars in a day, they go back to doing whatever they're doing. And that's not what I'm saying. The point of that is that if, if you can get up and do something as simple as make your bed, right? Something as simple as just fix the covers, fluff in the pillows, do whatever you need to do, but you do it over and over and over and over and over and over again, that's discipline. That becomes a, a, a routine. That becomes a habit. If you approach the market in the same way where every day you understand your strategy and you understand that this is technically when I'm going to buy, this is technically when I'm going to sell, okay, this worked, I'm taking my profits, okay, this didn't work, I'm exiting the trade, okay, this worked, I won, okay, this worked, I won, okay, this worked, I lost just a little bit, that's okay, okay, this worked, I won. Do you see what I'm saying? Versus some people get in, they, they get into a trade. You have you do nothing to win. You have to do nothing to win. You click buy, it goes up with you or without you. You win, but you think you did something right. Okay? You think you did something right. You think your exact entry was, you know, something that you think your exact entry was something that is 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 unique, is special. There's a million different traders out there, a thousand different traders, a hundred thousand different traders that all had a different entry point. If the market decided to run all day for 10 points, everybody won regardless of your strategy, regardless of what you thought. It's when you get into that trade, when it goes against you and you tell yourself, well, you know what, let me hold it. Let me give it a little bit more time. Oh, you know, I don't have any buying power. I can't make any more trades. Oh, I, you know, I've seen this happen before. And I remember one time I held overnight and it came back. If you can't do the same thing each and every single day and every single day in and out, you are not going to be able to stay in this game the long enough to break through the other side to where you start having more wins than losses. It's going to get to a point where you're not going to be losing constantly. It's going to get to a point where you're breaking even at the end of the week. It's going to get to a point where you break even at the end of the month. It's going to get to a point where you start breaking even at the end of the quarter to a point where you're going to notice that you're profitable this week. To where even with the losses, you were profitable at the end of the month. To even with the week out of three week losses, you were profitable at the end of the month. To even with having a bad month, you were profitable enough to be in the green at the end of a quarter. That even though you had three months of horrible trading and losses, you were still profitable at the end of the year. Because doing good things and having good habits and understanding and having rules and doing the same thing every single day is going to be more profitable than if you're jumping around every single day. If your trading plan changes every single day, if your strategy changes every single month, if your emotions get to you every other day, you are never going to break through with enough momentum to where you come out on the other side. You'll get to the top and then everything will come back down. You'll get to the top and then everything will come back down. I hope this video made sense. A little bit something different, a little bit of a rant. Hope you guys could take something from it. If you guys did, definitely hit the like button, comment, share, all of the above. I'll talk to you guys later.